reason why that Jesus said that they, in other words, us, may be one as we are in one. So Jesus, this evening, he is inviting. He's inviting you, me, the church, the body of Christ today to share in unity with him. The same kind of unity that he had with the Father. In Acts 17, 28, the Word of God says, For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, For we are also his offspring. And in 1 John 4, 4, the Word of God says, Greater is he, listen to this, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Talking about the enemy. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can you see it now? You see, Jesus didn't walk alongside. He didn't walk alongside Peter and Paul. He didn't walk alongside Stephen or Philip. He walked with them because he was in them. He was in them, united as one. That's the reason why the Paul the Apostle said, I live in him. I breathe in him. I move in him. I have my very being in him. I want you all to say that with me. I live in him. I breathe in him. I move in him. And I have my very being in him. That's right. That's right. Paul knew that you could not separate Jesus from him because they were one. Christ in you. Christ in you is a phrase most believers have heard at one time or another. But if we are to accomplish all that God has called us to do, if we are to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, cast out devils, and do greater works than Jesus Christ himself did in his earthly ministry, we must allow Christ in you to become a living reality in your lives, in all of our lives. It must come to be a living reality in all of our lives. You know, John's Gospel says in John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Did you know that you're a son of God or a daughter of God? The Word of God is telling us that God gave us the power that was necessary to transform our lives. Before we can truly walk in unity with Jesus, we need to walk in unity with our recreated spirit man. Now, I've done a lot of teaching about that this past year. As we begin to renew our minds, transforming them to the Word of God, we begin to see a metamorphosis take place. Just like a caterpillar. You know how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly? And it does it just little by little. Of course, the caterpillar to a butterfly is quite drastic. But you and I undergo a glorious change through him. Just like that caterpillar changes into that butterfly. The fact that you may see yourself as something a lot less. You listen to me. The fact that you see yourself as something a lot less does not change what our Lord Jesus Christ accomplished on that cross. Because he is in you. The word of God says so. He's there. He's there. It simply means that we are not walking in the full reality of the new birth. We have not received the full revelation of it. We have not been discipled and to come into that full revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. The Word of God says in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, and this is really a good scripture, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. Say that with me. Now. Now. Say it now. Now. Right now. That's right. We are the sons of God, not next week, not next month, or next year. Right this very moment. The moment you're born again, 
the very moment that we're born again, at this very moment, we become the sons of God. In order to be what God says we are and to know our relationship with Him, the process of transforming and renewing our minds to the Word of God must begin. It's a fact of renewing the mind. Not only renewing the mind to the Word of God, but renewing the mind to who we are in Christ Jesus. That when you look at your hands, you say, hey, I'm to use these to lay on someone that's sick so that they shall recover. Because He's in me and He wants to use me or He wants to use you. We must practice, live, and do the Word of God. You say, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, I've got tapes out there about, about acting on the Word, walking in the Word, uh, uh, and everything else back there that we've been teaching about. The to to total series of, uh, back there. When we practice, live, and do the Word of God so that Christ in us may rise up until His life can flow unhindered through us. Unhindered through us. Why? So that the world may believe and be convinced of Him. That's the New Testament church. You want to know why that church went vroom? Huh? Covered the then known world. They knew who they were in Christ. They knew the power that had been placed in them and they knew how to use it. Amen? I'm going to read a prophecy to you. This is out of the uh, Kenneth Copeland um, Believer's little magazine. I think probably everybody gets them. And this particular prophecy came from the 1991 United Kingdom International Believers Convention. And Kenneth Copeland is a man of God. <clears throat> Listen to the words of the Lord. I live inside of you, says the Lord. I'm not out there somewhere. I used to be before the cross. But now I'm in you. So practice, you hear that? Practice my indwelling presence. Practice my indwelling power. And realize it's not just you speaking. It's me inside of you. It's not just your hands that go forth. It's my hands inside of yours. I live in your heart. That's not just a figure of speech. It's functionally, literally true. I've come to live inside of you. Oh, practice my indwelling light. Do you hear that? Practice. Be aware of my indwelling light. When you walk up to one of my chosen ones who doesn't know my name yet, but who is looking for me, he's talking about someone that's unsaved. It's already been called. Um, realize it's not just you standing there, but I inside of you. Don't think it is strange that I said in my word to take no thought about what you'll say because I'm there. I will say what needs to be said, but I need you to be where you're supposed to be. To make the things that are important to, me, to you I'm sorry. To make the things that are important to me, important to you, that's my word. That's worship. That's giving. That is prayer. That is love. Heal yourself with my word, and I will lead you to those who are hurt. All you'll have to do is step aside and let my love shine. Let my healing balm throw, flow to your broken lives, to their broken lives. And you'll find new sisters and brothers wherever you go. I will heal the brokenhearted, but I've chosen to do it through the likes of you. Oh, I could do it on my own, but you're 
but your own need makes me love you and involve you. I could do it with 10,000 angels, but I chose to seek some person the least involved. Oh, be God inside-minded. Touch them with my love. You see, I live right on the inside of your words, your thoughts, your deeds, and I'm going to heal through you. Amen. Amen. So you see, my dear people, God wants to use each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. And I can remember when I first started out in the ministry, I said, oh, I don't know if I want to get up there. I don't know if I want to do this. I don't want to do that. And what the Lord told me, I never have said this to anybody. I said, I'm, I'm a little... You know what he said? Die to self. Die to self. That's right. Die to self. Oh, but what if they, uh, they uh, reject me or die to self? You see? Because he is in you. Each and every one of you. Say, He is in me. He is in me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Y'all learned something tonight? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.